So now we're going to introduce our next rule for finding derivatives. This rule is what allows us to take advantage of when we're able to recognize that a function is made from composition of simpler functions. For example, suppose h can be written as f of g. Then it turns out you can write the derivative of h in terms of the derivatives of f and g. Um, now this formula, the way it's written, is worth writing a few times each time you use it to help you remember it, but it's probably going to be simpler to think of it verbally, which we'll get to in a second. Uh, this fact is known as the chain rule. Um, the reason it's called the chain rule is because you can have one function inside of a function, inside of another function, inside of another function, etc. And if you have something that complicated, you just have to use this rule over and over and over in a chain uh, of calculations. Um, but let's start with simpler examples than that. So verbally, the way I would describe this rule is as follows. You take the derivative of the outside function. That's this f prime here. That was the derivative of f, which was our outside function. Take the derivative of the outside function and then plug in the inside function, the g. Just plug that into the f prime. After you've done that, multiply the result by the derivative of the inside function. So take the derivative of the outside function, plug in the inside function, then multiply by the derivative of the inside function. Here's an example. Let's find the derivative of the function 3x squared plus 4 quantity cubed. Let's start by thinking of this in terms of an inside and an outside function. The inside function that we're going to use will be 3x squared plus 4. That's the stuff inside parentheses. And the outside function would be something that will cube all of that, so x cubed. So this function that we're starting with can be written as the composition, uh, x cubed is the outside function, 3x squared plus 4 as the inside function. Now notice that the derivative of the outside function is easy to find, it's 3x squared. The derivative of the inside function is easy to find, it's 6x. So we can take the derivative of the original function. And by the way, this notation here, d over dx, that's a way of saying that we're going to take the derivative of whatever expression comes right after it. So this would be the derivative with respect to the variable x of this quantity. You'll see if the function involves a different symbol, like a t, then we'd write d dt instead to indicate what the variable is. But anyway, back to this example. We're going to take the derivative of this by following the verbal description of the chain rule. So we start by taking the derivative of the outside function. That's 3x squared. Now notice that I did not write an x. I instead left an empty space inside parentheses. That's because I'm going to follow the next step, which is to plug in the inside function. So if I had an x there, I would immediately replace the x with the inside function, 3x squared plus 4. And then there's one more step. We multiply this whole thing by the derivative of the inside function, which we know to be 6x. And that's it. That's the derivative of what we started with. Now, there was another way to try to answer this question. For example, we could have distributed the original function. Uh, remember, you can't just distribute the exponent. You have to multiply 3x squared plus 4 times 3x squared plus 4. Foil that out and then multiply by 3x squared plus 4 again and expand all that. So there would have been some tedious algebra if we didn't have the chain rule to use instead. Look at one more example. Let's find the derivative of the function square root of 2t plus 2. Think of this as an inside function, 2t plus 2. Uh, the video says a 4, but it's supposed to be a 2. Sorry about that. Uh, the derivative of that inside function is just 2. Notice that that error with the 4 doesn't make a difference. The outside function is square root of t. So if we plug 2t plus 4 into square root of t as the variable t, we'll get what we want for our whole function. And uh, the derivative of our outside function, 
Well, there are a couple ways to write it. Um, if you remember from a previous lesson, you can find the derivative of square root of t by thinking of it as t to the one half, and then using the power rule to take the derivative. So that would give you this expression, one half t to the negative one half. A lot of times you're gonna see the derivative instead written in this form, one over two square root of t, which is algebraically equivalent. We're gonna go ahead and use the expression one half t to the negative one half to begin with here. So when we take the derivative, and t is our variable, so we write d dt to indicate we're taking the derivative of this function of t. Then first we take the derivative of the outside function. That's one half t to the negative one half. But I'm not bothering to write a t because I'm immediately plugging in the inside function. And then I multiply the whole thing by the derivative of the inside function. Now just to illustrate some relevant algebra here, Let's observe that we could write this a different way. You could think of the negative exponent as a reciprocal and a one-half exponent as a square root. So you could rewrite this answer as 2 over 2 times the square root of 2t plus 2. But you also have a factor of 2 in the numerator and a factor of 2 in the denominator. You could cancel those and just write this answer as 1 over the square root of 2t plus 1. 